namanya itu. I put my finger. Okay, okay. I didn't know where the camera is. Okay, don't put your finger in the camera. Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now today we're at the ocean and it's really windy. What? What was that? Sorry, come again? Oh, you think this video would be a lot easier to watch if I did it mostly in voiceover? Are you sure I could just keep yelling over the sound of the wind? Okay, whatever you say. Let's see if we can poke around these rocks and find something cool. Let's go. Unlike much of the east and west coast, the Gulf of Mexico doesn't really have a lot of great tidal pool areas. Oftentimes, it's these man-made jetties that are used for fishing that you can find a hot spot of species. Many species such as crabs, anemones, isopods, and more will use these rocky formations to find shelter and protect themselves from the world of predators that lives in the ocean. One of the first creatures we found was this nice little marine snail. Oh, look at that cute little face. Yeah. Now these areas have a plethora of life. Take a look at this striking anemone, as well as this luscious blue crab, and these other crustaceans that linger around the area. How diverse is this one shot? Now, one of my favorite species to encounter along the Gulf are these awesome little wharf roaches. Now, despite their name, these are actually isopods. That's right, these are giant marine cousins to the woodlouse or roly-poly or pill bug that you might be able to find in your backyard or your garden. Now, these are a little more voracious, living more of an amphibious lifestyle, but feeding on a variety of decaying material, such as seaweed or decaying and dead fish. Aren't these bizarre little creatures so cool? Now, we were able to catch a super big one. Take a look at this interesting animal. Now, it may surprise you to know that roly-polies and other isopods are not insects. They are, in fact, crustaceans, which makes sense that we would see these giant cousins at the beach. How weird are these animals? Now, I believe this species is Ligia exotica, and you can find them on most of the coast in the United States. As we walked along, I kept my eyes peeled for some interesting species of crustaceans. We had continually run into blue crabs. The Atlantic blue crab is one of the more common crab species in the Gulf of Mexico. But I was hoping to find something a little cooler. That's when I spotted it. This amazing Manipi genus stone crab. Wow. Look at that. Look at those claws. Here, let's take this sucker back up to the shore and take a right, look at it. Whoa. 
So we brought the crab over to the shore and I wanted to be really, really careful because unlike those awesome little blue land crabs that we caught last year, I'm fairly certain that a pinch from one of these guys could either break or completely remove one of my fingers at this size. Of course, I still messed with it and poked at it anyway uh, because they're quite heavy and slow out of the water. But take a look at some of these massive claws that these stone crabs possess. Is that not an impressive looking crab? Well, being fully aquatic, I didn't want to keep him out of the water for too long. So after we got some of our shots that we wanted, he went bloop, scooped right back up in the net. Well, <laughs> he tried to fight it, but I'm like, no, I'm helping you, buddy. Scooped him right back up in the net, and we went to release him back in the water where we found him. So we kind of jog over to the jetties and look for the rock that we caught him walking around under. And once we found that rock, we let him drift off into the water. Check that out. Now these rocks were full of life. Take a look at this beautiful little blue anemone. Now what's really cool about anemones is that each tentacle is lined with what's called nematocysts, which are these little stinging cells that have essentially a little venomous harpoon that gets shot out into their prey items and of course delivers a painful paralyzing venom so that the anemone or other nadarian can work at its leisure to feed on the paralyzed prey. Of course, I couldn't help myself. I had to catch another one of those really cool little wharf roaches, the Ligia exotica isopods. Just take a look at how crazy and alien these isopods look compared to our more subdued pill bugs from home. Aren't these interesting? Now navigating the slippery rocks can be quite a feat. So I actually slipped here. You can see me trying to wipe some of the gross poop stain looking algae off of my butt, uh, but I didn't notice that I had actually cut my feet up pretty bad. So I moved on to look for more little creatures. So we came upon this little crab, this little, another little swimmer blue crab, and see how it can just shuffle into the sand just immediately and be completely hidden. And you can see his little eyes poking out. Boop. Poke them under the sand and then they pop right back up to keep an eye on us. And then we also had this really, really cool little hermit crab. Now the next little bit of the video is going to have a little bit of blood in it. So if that makes you squeamish, I would suggest pausing it now or fast forwarding. This is a really cool little hermit crab. So about this time I'm realizing, hmm, I'm leaving footprints of blood in the sand and I might need to figure that out. So you can see there's a little bit of blood in the sand there. And I'm like, oh man, my feet are completely sliced up. So I go and rinse them out in the water so I can see just how deep they are. Once again, there's my poop stain. And you can see right across my heel, I've got a huge scrape, probably from a barnacle or a piece of sharp rock. And I go, well, I guess I'll just film the outro now because I'm not going to walk around anymore with my sliced up feet. So I say... Everybody, thank you for watching. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of Jack's Full of Wildlife. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, buy all the new merch, do whatever you got to do to support us because I do put my blood, my sweat, and my tears into this show. Thank you.